The Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company, maker of better things for better living through chemistry. That is the ear of the United States Coast Guard listening for a submarine. Bearing 214. Nothing there. Pick up anything, Casey? Uh, no, sir, not yet. Bearing 215. Nothing there. Bearing 216. Nothing there. Bearing 218. Nothing there. Bearing 220. Contact. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. Tonight you ought to hear a story entitled Submarine Astern, starring Ray Milland and written by David Harmon. Later in the program, you will hear from our special guest, George H. Corston, chief gunner's mate of the Coast Guard cutter Campbell, which recently sank or dispersed six German submarines. Listen then to Submarine Astern, starring Ray Milland on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by the DuPont Company. <laughs> My name is Dan Harper, gunner's mate first class in the submarine chaser Dewey. Signed up out of Boston. Just another member of the United States Coast Guard. Right now we're in port with a few hours to kill, so like every other sailor from Singapore to Salem, we convoy five foot two of female. Pretty, isn't it, Dan? I'll say. I mean the music sailor, not that number with a henna rip. Oh, my error. If you aren't making eyes at some Brooklyn special, you're looking back at the table at Pat. Don't worry, she's in good hands. Yeah, too good. That's what I'm afraid of. Does a little competition scare you? Ah, of course not. I love it. But just for fun, let's go back to the table and see what they're talking about, huh? Mm -hmm. Just for fun, eh? Pardon me. Excuse me. Coming through. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, safe at last. <clears throat> Hello, you two. Hi. As I was saying, Pat, he zoomed out of the clouds and opened up a Hey, look, was... pilot. You don't expect a brass band. Just a nice, friendly hello, see? Oh, sorry, I was just talking to Pat. Yeah, so I see. Tired of dancing, Dan? Oh, that's not dancing. That floor's a second front. Bill was telling me the most thrilling story about the first time he shot down a zero. Oh, he was, was he? Hey, Boson, did you stick in an oar for the Coast Guard? I was listening. Doris, you ought to get Bill to tell you all about it. I'd be glad to. I didn't hear anybody ask. And besides, it's time the Coast Guard got a few words in. Ah, that's the trouble with you New Englanders. You've got salt water running through your veins. <laughs> I can remember the time we rescued the crew of that fishing boat, the Mary Ann. Bounding off the coast of Nantucket. You're a great help, Pop. That's what I mean, Dan. Say, what do you think we do in that ocean? Go fishing? I thought we were fighting Hitler and the Japs. Oh, this isn't a fight, baby. I'm just setting this eagle straight on the Coast Guard. Oh, uh, Bosun, uh, tell us about the time you caught Fearless Fosdick smuggling in a boatload of French perfume, huh? <laughs> Say, Phil. Yeah, what? There's something I'd like to ask you. Well, yeah, go right ahead. Do you ever go up high enough so you have to use oxygen? Oh, plenty of times. Ah, that accounts for it. It's affected his brain. <laughs> <laughs> Let's dance, Phil. Sure, sure. It's getting late, Dan. Yeah, we've got to be shoving off. I'm heading out to sea tomorrow. Hey, Boats, take care of my share of the check, will you? Eh? Give it you back on the ship. Don't worry, I'll remind you. Yeah, well, I so long, Bye. Sailor. Bye. See if you can catch me a whale. <laughs> So you walk a couple of blocks, then hop on the Washington Heights Express. Past 72nd, 96th, 103rd, a few other stops before you get to 181st. You walk a few more blocks up the steps of a brownstone and... They're here. Yeah. You weren't sore, were you, Danny? About what? About having Phil tell me how he shot down that plane. Oh, it wasn't that. It's just that I'm sick and tired of having everybody think I'm a beachcomber. I don't think so, Dan. I know you don't, baby. Well, it's getting late, and i got to get up early. So you're careful out of that plant, aren't you? Oh, I sure I am. You know, that riveting is pretty dangerous work. you got to watch yourself. I worry about you, too, Dan. Uh-huh. Your mother home? 
Oh, she's sleeping by now. <laughs> you know, these blackouts have some good points, too. They sure do. How long are you going to be gone? I don't know. Can you tell? Look, I better be shoving off. Dan, once more before you go. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Keep your chin up, baby. <laughs> So you say goodnight, and then that long trip back to Staten Island. You walk a few blocks, hunt for a nickel in your pocket, and then run for a subway. The trains are almost as crowded at 2 in the morning as they are in the afternoon. You rumble beneath the streets of New York and read the ads. You watch a guy who's had one too many. Take a look at the different uniforms from the different countries. Flyers from Australia, French sailors, American doughboys. You start to nod yourself, then finally you get the battery place. Hop out of the subway, run across the street, then run to catch the ferry. You start to feel a little freer when you get on that Staten Island ferry. Not that it's much of a boat, but it goes on the water, and that's good enough for you. You watch the dimmed out skyline of New York fade away, and, and then in the distance you see the lady with a lamp. Not many civvies on the boat at that time, mostly sailors. Finally, you bump against the dock. You hop off, start walking back to the ship. You spot a couple of other guys from Madui, and you catch up to them just before they get to the gangplank. Dave, especially blonde. In a sarong. Ah, uh, who cares what they're wearing? Hiya, Danny. Hiya. Uh, now, Danny. as I was saying, blondes over redheads any time. I'll stick to redheads. Ah, uh, Les, sometimes I think... Well, let's leave it up to Danny. Leave it up to him. Not after what he was dragging down in Baltimore. Well, so what if she wasn't pretty? She went to college, she had brains. <laughs> and besides... Hey, who's doing that? Who's whistling? Me, why? How long have you been in the Coast Guard? Five months. Hasn't anyone ever told you never to whistle aboard ship? What are you trying to do, jinxes? Don't you know the whistling is just like asking for a storm? Well, I don't know about the rest of you sailors, but I'm going to hit the sack. The rest of you do the same thing. Down the ladder into the belly of the ship. Crawl out of your clothes and into the sack. A couple of the guys are playing AC Deucey. From Buff the snoring as usual. Just stretch out and you know you're home. The slight heave of the ship as you rise at anchor. The water slapping against the sides. The smell of grease. You yawn, roll over on your side and start dreaming. Come on, you little life buzzards. This ain't the rich. Maybe you like breakfast in bed, Hopper. Show a leg, Taylor. I'm showing, I'm showing. Oh, doesn't that guy ever sleep? Someday I'm going to get him in a dark alley and make him eat that bosun's pipe. Yeah, and don't forget the cord. I won't. Come on, let's wash down. I'm starving. Hey, who's got my toothpaste? Not me. Then it must be just a coincidence that it's in your left hand. Well, imagine that. Hey, cut it out. What are you splashing water? What are you, a freshwater sailor? See you, child. All right, I'll be right with you. Hey, Cookie, take my sunny side up. This morning, that's scrambled. You know I like them sunny side. Do you want eggs? Of course I want eggs. Just close your eyes, Hopper. You'll never know the difference. Where are we headed, Captain? Just a routine cruise to Calm 3. It's plenty hot down there. Wolf pack of German subs has been reported working thereabouts. If we're lucky, we'll find it. We're shoving off at 0800. Have the bosun pipe muster. Yes, sir. Bosun, pipe muster. Yes, sir. All hands fall in and muster. <coughs> You line up, while roll is called, and you get your instructions. You take care of about a hundred different things. The last mooring lines are cast off, and the ship starts to move down past the docks, out into the bay, down the narrows and out to sea. Rudder 15 degrees right. Rudder is 15 degrees right, sir. Steer course 185. Course is 185, sir. And you're off. Off to Torpedo Junction. And 
now all the sounds and the smells of the subchase are around you. Around you and about 54 other guys. Men on the bridge of the ship, the brain. Helmsman, captain, radio. The young ensign from Buffalo. Standing up there guarding the ship and all the time listening to the incessant ping, ping of the sound detector. Listening for that ping to come in pairs. Listening for a contact. Captain. What is it, Mr. Becker? What are our chances if we do spot a sub? Excellent if we spot her first and the depth charge your sinker. But if she surfaces, we'll have a fight on our hands. We'll give a good account of ourselves, sir. I don't doubt that. But remember that a sub's a good deal larger than we are. It won't take many shells to sink a 165-footer. In fact, one well-placed torpedo will do it. A 165-foot cutter with 55 men aboard. And every man aboard can hear the steady thump of the diesels. Even the men who sit in the crow's nest for hours with the wind whistling right through them. Relief for the lookout. Lookout is relieved. I sure don't envy you, Lawson. My watch is behind me, and I'm headed for a cup of chamoak. You see anything? Not even a fish. Now, if you don't mind, I'll leave you to your thoughts. I'm freezing. And down in the recreation room, a recreation room, but it isn't a mess room. That's where you go to stretch out and shoot the breeze when the other guys are knocking themselves out. Hey, Hedeman. What now? How do you spell retaliate? Retaliate? Why? I'm writing to my girl. Uh, R, uh, 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 how do you want to use the word? Well, I'm just saying, like, dear Dolly, I have received your letter, and now I retaliate. Down in the galley, there's the everlasting symphony of pots and pangs banging against the bulkhead. And there's the thump of the engines and the steady ping of the sound detector on the bridge. But if you happen to be on a gun crew, you get plenty of fresh air while you're giving that three-incher a beauty treatment. Hey, hand me that hunk of waste, will you, kid? Hey, uh, a nice-looking gun. We wouldn't know. All we've been shooting at is pop bottles and flowing whales. <laughs> He's kind of touchy about that, kid. You see, every time he leaves the ship, she sinks a sub. And the ship he joins goes dry. It's sort of a game in the Coast Guard. You know, button, button, who gets stuck with Skip? <laughs> ah, listen, Sergeant York, I never heard about you bringing in any Germans. Well, that's only because I've... Say, what are you wearing? A sweater. My girl made it for me. Looks more like a bathrobe. The, the ocean is starting to turn green and black. <laughs> the ocean isn't the only thing that's turning green. I'm all right. Looks like we're in for a blow. Look at those clouds. You know, Skip, I remember once when we were in a storm for 10 days. Is that so? Yeah, and all we had to eat was some cold lamb gravy. It's getting worse, isn't it? Oh, this is practically calm. Why, I can remember when... Tell that... him all about it. He'll enjoy it. I got a wheel watch coming up. See you, chow. I'll be there. So will I. We'll leave for the watch, sir. We'll leave the wheel. Of course, it's 185. Wheel has been relieved, sir. Steering 185. Very well, leave below. Bearing is 228. Nothing there. You go along and you drill. And if there's one thing you do want, it's a target. You'll settle for just one submarine. Lately, you've just been drilling. But you can never can tell when you're liable to find one down Periscope Alley. So you practice, loading and firing, loading and firing. With all your griping, you keep the sound of the detector running through your mind. The ping, ping, ping. And after a while, you think you hear them in pairs, and you jerk up your head, and look out to sea. Because maybe... Yeah, but there's nothing but sea and sky. Pick up anything, Casey? No, sir, not yet. Bearing is 204. Nothing there. Bearing is 206. Nothing there. Bearing is 208. Nothing there.
You are listening to Ray Milland in Submarine Astern on the Cavalcade of America, sponsored by DuPont. A moment ago, we heard the shrill whine of the sound detector, the single whine that means the Dewey is still searching for a submarine. Bearing is 210. Nothing there. It's the waiting that gets you. Three days out in that ocean and you haven't even picked up a sleeping whale. Nothing but drills and eating and sleeping and, and waiting. Always waiting for that wine to come in pairs. Your nerves get on edge and you snap at the guy next to you. You gripe about everything and you wait. 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 Steady on course. Steady on course, sir. Bearing 216. Nothing there. Bearing 218. Nothing there. Bearing 220. Contact. What does it bear? Contact bearing 220. Range is 200. Right full rudder. Steer course 210. <laughs> Target changing. Bearing rapidly to the right, sir. He's wise to us. Right full rudder, sir. Steer course 220, sir. Yes, sir. Horses 220. This looks like it. Ah, it might be just a whale or some fish. Yeah, you're a great help. Hey, I wonder where it is. Change your mind? Yeah, we're doing too much dodging and weaving to be playing tag with a whale. I wonder where he's hiding. Why don't you go up and ask the old man? Billy Drew Gant pointed it out to you. Oh, I was only wondering. You know what's going to happen if one of those tin Torpedo fish... Torpedo to port! There it is, Skip. Torpedo, two points to port! Torpedo! Look at that thing come. If anybody wants to pray, now is the time to do it. Boy, it's getting awful near. Too near. Why doesn't the skipper get us out of this? Right full rudder. Steer course 240. Rudder is full right, sir. Steady on course 240. Are we turning off? Maybe. Maybe. Wow, it's a good thing we ain't where we were. You can say that again, brother. Set all depth charges 100 feet. Set all depth charges 100 feet. All depth charges are set, sir. That hiding won't miss on the next one. Bearing 224, range is 165. Steer course 224. Steady on course 224, sir. We'll keep bearing right down on them. Our only chance is to throw those ash cans before he has a chance to send another torpedo. Bearing is 230, range is 150. Target bearing changing rapidly to the right, sir. Stay course, 240. Steady on course, 240, sir. You think they'll let go with another one? They will if they get a chance. Now stop talking about it and look. I'm looking, I'm looking, but a guy can wonder, can he? Maybe he'd like me to swim over and ask him. Keep looking. Bearing is 230, range is 90. Steady on course. Steady on course it is, sir. Stand by to drop pattern number four. Standing by to drop pattern number four, sir. Range is 65. I bet that water is cold. You sure picked a swell time to talk about swimming. Why don't we drop those charges already? Look, Mac, will you stop bothering me with questions? I got things on my mind. Range is 400. Bearing is 290. Right, 15 degrees rudder. Steer course, 290. Rudder is 15 degrees right, sir. Steady on course, 290. Range is four. Lost contact, sir. Well, find it, find it. Yes, sir. Got it back, sir. Range is 450. Bearing is 242. Stand by to drop charges. Standing by to drop charges, sir. Stand by to drop charges. Does that answer your question? Why, I'm still sweating. Yeah, you got good reason to. Range is 400, sir. Range is 350, sir. Drop charges. Chances, Danny. Well, pretty good if a depth charges find it. 
Not so hot if she services and we have to fight it out with deck guns. I never knew these boats were so small. They can hold their own. Boy, the way that water shoots up, it looks like a picture I saw once of a thing called Old Faithful. Never mind that scenery, Rembrandt. Look for oil and wreckage. Well, the way this ship is weaving Come around... Come it... the There she is. Well, this is where I find out why we practice. You ain't kidding. All guns target. Two points on port quarter. Range is 550, scale 496. Commence firing. Well, you heard him. Come on, let's go. Ready, one. Fire! Ready, two. Fire! Come on, keep that ammunition coming. Ah, oh, stop complaining. You're getting it faster than you can fire it. Keep that machine gun firing. It's jammed. Well, fix it. Look at those Germans make for that gun. Yeah, it sure picked a fine time to jam up. One good shot of that war line and we can sink her. They don't get us first. Why don't... Those dirty... They're shooting at us. What do you think they we're going to do? You okay, Dan? Yeah. I'm okay. How's the gun? We caught a real one that time. Hold the engine room. Yes, sir. Engine room. Report on damage. Engine room. Engine room to bridge. All the engines are okay. We're shipping a little water. We won't be able to take many more like that. That was a lucky hit. Well, what are we waiting for? Another one? Now I see what they mean by a moving target. Just worry about hitting that water line. And they tore away some of the rigging with that one. I can see it. It's really getting hot. It's them or us. Come on, baby. Push those shells home. We're counting on you. We've really got their range. Ah, don't be so happy. They got ours, too. Hey, Hopper, sink that thing already. I'm getting tired. Anything for you, Skip. <laughs> he did it. She's going down. So if I'd have known that's what you were waiting for, I'd have asked you sooner. She's firing. Stand by to pick up survivors. Now for a close look at some of those Nazis. There's one now. Grab a hold of this. Hey, uh, but that water's freezing. That's their worry. <laughs> Come on, get up here. Come on, get... Over okay. there with your buddies, chum. Hey, there's another one. Hey, the fishing's pretty good. Looks like you caught some gold braid on this one. So I did, so I did. Uh, thank you. Hey, this one speaks American. I'm Captain Schweitzer. Would you please take me to your captain? Yeah, you walk in front. I'll tell you where to go. I like to tell him, too. Hopper reporting, sir. Is the captain of that sub. So I see. Good shooting, Hopper. Thank you, sir. And now, Captain, if you would step into my quarters. These are pretty dangerous waters, Captain. What were you doing around here? I have been waiting on the bottom for three days for a convoy to pass. I thought you were the first ship. That's why I picked up my sound. I see. It's embarrassing to be sunk by such a small ship. Fortunes of war, Captain. Well, that's the way it happened. And next time I get a shore leave, I'm going to catch up with that aviator. I'm going to tell him the Coast Guard motto. Semper Paratus. Always ready. Thank you, Ray Milan. Ladies and gentlemen, in a few moments, Mr. Milan will return to the microphone to introduce our special guest of this evening, Chief Gunner's Mate George H. Corston of the United States Coast Guard. Meanwhile, we have a story of a new chemical development saving thousands of pounds of rubber in the war effort. Bomber noses of lucite and other transparent sections for fighter planes, while they are being manufactured are covered with protective sheets of tough brown paper that usually stay on them until the plane finally rolls off the assembly line and takes to the air. But just to say they're covered with paper isn't enough. The paper must be fastened to the lucite so firmly with a special adhesive that particles of sawdust or dirt cannot accumulate under the covering when the lucite is cut with a high-speed saw or, say, drilled. And though it must cling very tightly, the adhesive must allow the paper to be peeled off, leaving very few smudges and spots. The problem that came up was that the best-known adhesive, which would do all of these things, required scarce rubber latex. Well, America needs bombers, but America also needs rubber. So DuPont chemists and technicians set out to compound an adhesive which would be the equal of the one used, 
or better if possible, but which wouldn't call for any rubber latex. They experimented with more than 150 formulas. And to make a long story short, they finally created a new adhesive. DuPont and other manufacturers of acrylic resins would have used this year hundreds of thousands of pounds of rubber latex cement. Now that rubber will be saved. This new DuPont adhesive for acrylic resin, so new that it doesn't even have a name, is actually better than the old latex adhesive. Wright Field and the Navy quickly approved it. It can be manufactured in already existing equipment. It withstands high and low temperatures, high and low humidities. So lucite replacement parts may be shipped to North Africa or Russia with safety. It has no chemical effect that might swell or discolor the lucite. It doesn't age as rapidly as rubber. It stands sunlight better than rubber, an important factor in protecting a plastic so vital to aircraft. It is much more uniform than rubber. In fact, it has everything rubber has for this purpose, plus other advantages. The new adhesive, replacing a more critical material, was developed by DuPont at the request of the Army, the Navy, and the War Production Board. It is under allocation by the War Production Board for this particular use, but there is little doubt that it will find other uses after the war. Another wartime problem has been solved. Another wartime conservation measure has succeeded, thanks to the DuPont know-how, which brings you better things for better living through chemistry. And now, the star of tonight's cavalcade, Ray Milan. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our fictional story tonight partially parallel the coup story that was in the news a few weeks ago about the Coast Guard cutter Campbell. We are fortunate tonight to, to add realism to the broadcast by having with us George H. Corston, chief gunner's mate of the Campbell. Thank you, Mr. Milland. I really enjoyed your show. For a while there, I thought I was back on the Campbell. <laughs> well, Chief, uh, truth is stranger than fiction. I read that you men contacted six subs in 12 hours. That must have been quite an experience. It was, but that's what we've been trained for, and we were ready. I also read that you rammed the last one. Did you get any, uh, any of the others? Well, I can't say definitely. But personally, we on the Campbell feel that more than one of the subs will never get back to Germany. <laughs> well, good for you. I uh, judge by those ribbons you're wearing that you've gotten around quite a lot. Well, during the past eight years I've been in the Coast Guard, I've done quite a bit of traveling. In fact, during wartime, wherever the Navy goes, we go. And that included landing Marines on Guadalcanal and Casablanca. <laughs> well, thank you, Chief Corston, and the best of luck and good hunting. Be with us again next Monday when Cavalcade presents A Week from Tomorrow, April 13th, and throughout the United States and in every country in the world where the democratic way of life prevails, the birthday of Thomas Jefferson will be celebrated. In special observance of the occasion, Cavalcade will present a new radio play, The Lengthening Shadow, in tribute to Jefferson. Our star will be Frederick March. Be with us next Monday when Cavalcade presents Frederick March as Thomas Jefferson in a new radio play, The Lengthening Shadow. The orchestra and musical score on tonight's program were under the direction of Don Vuri. Cavalcade is pleased to inform its listeners that tonight's star, Ray Milan, will soon be seen in the Paramount picture, Lady in the Dark. You've done your bit. Now do your best. If you're not investing 10% of your wages or salary in war bonds, now is the time to start. America's second war loan starts in one week. Our government asks that every one of us do our share. 10% every payday as a loan to Uncle Sam, a loan that will pay dividends in liberty as well as money. This is Clayton Collier sending best wishes from Cavalcade sponsor, the DuPont Company of Wilmington, Delaware. This program came to you from New York. This is the National Broadcasting Company.